I was fortunate enough to be brought up in the countryside in a little cottage. And I suppose my first 10 years of my life was spent in the countryside, you know, biking, climbing trees and in touch with nature. And I think that's perhaps where my love of nature started. I think in those days it was more just a boyhood playground. It was in subsequent years that I, you know, really became passionate about beautiful world and species that surround us. It was, you know, the 60s and hippies we all were and I still perhaps am. You know, I think we appreciated the world we lived in. We wanted to protect it. And, you know, in those days there were maybe a couple of billion less people than there are today. But the pressure on nature was already beginning to show its ugly face. In Student Magazine, which is the, you know, the first thing I ran, we would cover conservation issues. Even back in those days, you know, poaching of elephants was starting. We would write extensively about them. Back in the 1780s, there weren't many businesses that thought about the environment. The best example of a business that thought about it in the UK was Body Shop, Anita Roddick. And she was almost a lone campaigner for many years. She was, I think, a great example to all of us. There's no question that traveling opened my eyes and I think it opens most people's eyes. You know, I was lucky in my early 20s that I came to Africa and I came out into the bush and I fell in love with it and have been coming ever since. NECA had a massive effect on me. It was one of the few sort of completely pristinely beautiful parts of the world, both on land and in the sea and this gorgeous reef all the way around it pristine blue sea, wonderful species both in, inside and outside the water. Since I actually ended up on NECA when I was still in my 20s, it certainly did a lot to make me want to protect A, what was going on in and around NECA, but B, in the wider world itself. Caring for the environment in a big way perhaps was sparked from Al Gore banging on my door one day and well before he made Inconvenient Truth and giving me an eye-opening lecture about what was going on in the globe and it was almost from that moment that we decided that, that we really needed to do something about it. We decided to set up the Carbon War Room which is working with the 21 industries that most pollute and seeing if we can come up with imaginative ways to help them avoid polluting. And it was from that moment that we set up the Earth Prize, which is a $25 billion prize to see if somebody out there can come up with a way of extracting carbon out of the Earth's atmosphere. There's no question that Virgin's involved um, in you know, a number of businesses uh, that emit a lot of carbon. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that I have to work particularly hard, and all the people at Virgin have to work particularly hard to balance our books, but more importantly to you know, try to help other people balance their books as well. I'm hopeful that one day our planes will be running on fuel that is either completely recycled or it's clean fuel. And there are you know, some wonderful projects that have been worked on that, that gives me hope on that. All of us at Virgin have a philosophy which we call Gaia Rocks, and Gaia Rocks encompasses all the various different efforts, whether it's for the oceans, whether it's for species on land, such as the rhino or the elephant or the tiger or the lemurs in Madagascar that we're working on trying to preserve. And through that, I have the pleasure of swimming with whale sharks off Cancun, swimming with sailfish, I mean, the most beautiful fish, and seeing them attacking these balls of sardines underwater and coming, you know, slightly perilously close to my nose and one occasion. Over the last 20 years, partly due to social media, I think attitudes towards protecting species has improved dramatically. And therefore, I think there's a real chance of protecting some of these species that really are in peril. But you have to realize just how in peril they are. We as people are 100% responsible for protecting the species that remain on the earth. I'm a born optimist. I think it's much more fun in life to be an optimist, but we have to make our own optimism. If you're in a position to make a difference, you've got to spend every waking hour trying to make a difference. I think the Richard of the 70s would be quite jealous of the, of the, of the Richard today because embarking on trying to protect species that are in danger is a wonderful voyage. And you come across these magnificent species, you meet magnificent people on the way, and it's a magnificent challenge. And that Richard <laughs> and this Richard love a challenge.